The old brass key felt wrong in my hand as I approached Marissa's storage shed. Six months since the funeral, and I still couldn't bring myself to clear out her things. But today was different. Today, I needed to find Mom's antique music box, the one thing Lila had asked for since moving in with me. A gust of autumn wind rustled the overgrown garden, sending dead leaves skittering across my path. The padlock clicked open on the third try, the door's hinges protesting with a long, mournful creak. Grandma? The whisper was so faint I almost missed it. I froze, my hand still on the door handle. That couldn't be Lila's voice. She was at school. I dropped her off myself this morning. Grandma, please. My heart stopped. The voice came from the darkest corner of the shed, behind stacked moving boxes and old furniture. I fumbled for my phone's flashlight, hands trembling as I swept the beam across the cluttered space. The light caught a flash of purple fabric, Lila's favorite sweater. She was huddled against the wall, her small wrists bound with zip ties to an old radiator pipe. Oh God, Lila. I rushed forward, knocking over boxes in my panic. Baby, who did this to you? She flinched when I touched her, then collapsed against me, sobbing. Her skin felt ice cold, her dark hair matted with dirt. How long had she been here? Daddy said. She choked out between sobs, said I had to stay quiet, like mommy did. The world tilted sideways, like mommy did. Marissa's accident six months ago, the fall down the basement stairs that never made sense, suddenly crystallized into something far more sinister. When did your father bring you here? I worked at the zip ties with shaking fingers, trying to keep my voice steady. After school yesterday, he said. Lila's voice dropped to a whisper. He said I was being bad like mommy. The zip ties finally snapped. I gathered Lila into my arms, her small body trembling against mine. She felt lighter than I remembered, her collarbones sharp under my fingers. Has this happened before, sweetheart? She nodded against my shoulder. Sometimes, when I make daddy mad, or when I tell about the mean lady who visits. Mean lady? I filed that away, forcing myself to focus on getting Lila to safety. My mind raced through options, hospital first, then police. Document everything. But most importantly, keep her away from Trent. As I carried her out of the shed, my phone buzzed. Trent's name lit up the screen along with his text. Taking Lila to dinner tonight. Be there at six to pick her up. He didn't know. He had no idea I'd found her. I looked down at my granddaughter at the angry red marks on her wrists and the fear still lingering in her eyes. The same eyes as Marissa's, eyes that must have held similar fear in those final months. It's okay now, I whispered, but the words felt hollow. Nothing about this was okay. My daughter was dead, her husband was a monster, and I'd been blind to it all, but not anymore. I held Lila closer as we walked to my car, each step cementing my resolve. Trent would pay for what he'd done, to my granddaughter, to my daughter, to our family. But first I needed to understand exactly what I was dealing with. The game he'd been playing was about to change. He just didn't know it yet. The emergency room's fluorescent lights cast harsh shadows across Lila's face as the doctor examined her wrists. I sat nearby, clutching my phone, waiting for Trent's inevitable call. The hospital staff had already documented everything, the bruises, the malnutrition, the rope burns. Each piece of evidence felt like another nail in Trent's coffin. My phone buzzed. Not Trent, Finn. Mom, what's going on? The school called saying Lila never showed up today. I stepped into the hallway, keeping one eye on Lila through the door. I found her in Marissa's storage shed. Trent. My voice cracked. He left her there overnight. Silence crackled across the line. Then, I'm on my way. Don't let that bastard anywhere near her. As if summoned by Finn's words, Trent's voice boomed down the corridor. Where's my daughter? I'm her father. I have every right to see her. I turned to see him striding toward me, all polished corporate charm in his tailored suit. The same suit he'd worn to Marissa's funeral. Behind him stood a woman I didn't recognize. Her sleek blonde hair and designer clothes screaming executive. Something about her presence made my skin crawl. Eleanor. 
Trent's smile didn't reach his eyes. What's this about? The school called, saying Lila was absent. Cut the act, I snapped. I found her in the shed, tied up, like you left her. The blonde woman's eyes widened slightly before her face smoothed back to neutral. Trent didn't miss a beat. That's ridiculous. Lila's been acting out lately, making up stories, just like her mother used to. He lowered his voice. All concern. I've been meaning to talk to you about getting her some help. The casual mention of Marissa's scent rage coursing through me. Like the help you got my daughter? Mrs. Blake, the blonde woman stepped forward. I'm Callie Rivers, Trent's colleague. Perhaps we could discuss this somewhere private? For Lila's sake. A memory surfaced, Marissa's voice on the phone, three weeks before her death. He's always working late with this woman from the office. Says, I'm paranoid for asking questions. You. I met Callie's carefully neutral gaze. You're the mean lady, Lila mentioned. Color drained from Callie's face. Trent's hand tightened on her arm, a gesture I recognized from countless photos of him with Marissa. Always controlling, always possessing. Mom. Finn's voice cut through the tension as he rounded the corner. He positioned himself between me and Trent, his shoulders tight with barely contained fury. Mr. Calloway. A police detective appeared behind us, flanked by two officers. We need to ask you some questions about your daughter's injuries. Trent's mask slipped for just a moment, long enough for me to see the rage beneath. This is a misunderstanding. Eleanor's clearly upset imagining things. Grief can do that to people. The evidence isn't imaginary, I said quietly. Neither are the videos from Marissa's phone. I was bluffing. I hadn't found any videos yet. But Trent's light flinch told me they existed somewhere. Callie's hand twitched toward her purse before she caught herself. We should go, she murmured to Trent. Call your lawyer. As the police led Trent away, I caught a glimpse of Lila watching from her hospital room. She looked so much like Marissa in that moment, the same quiet strength beneath the fear. I hadn't protected Marissa, but I would protect Lila, even if it meant burning Trent's whole world down to do it. Mom, Finn touched my shoulder. What videos was that about? I don't know yet, I admitted. But Trent's reaction just told us where to start looking. Marissa's laptop sat on my kitchen table like a time bomb. After three days of Lila in the hospital, child protective services interviews, and temporary custody arrangements. I finally had a moment to search for those videos I'd bluffed about. Finn had managed to crack Marissa's password, her wedding date, of all things. Found something. Finn called from the living room where he was going through a box of Marissa's papers. Bank statements. Look at these transfers. I opened the first video file I found instead. Marissa's face filled the screen, her eyes wide with fear. If anything happens to me, she whispered, it wasn't an accident. Trent's been. The recording cut off. The timestamp showed three days before her death. My hands shook as I opened another file. This one showing Trent and Callie in Marissa's home office, arguing in hushed voices while Marissa recorded from the hallway. The money's gone, Trent, Callie hissed. The board meeting's in two weeks. When they audit, they won't find anything. Trent cut her off. Marissa's company will take the fall. I've already planted the evidence. The phone rang, startling me. Unknown number. Mrs. Blake. A woman's voice, familiar but unexpected. This is Callie Rivers. We need to talk. I think we said everything we needed to at the hospital. Please. Her voice cracked. I have information about Marissa's death. But Trent, he's watching me. Can you meet me at the Riverside Cafe in an hour? I glanced at Finn, who was still absorbed in the financial documents. Why should I trust you? Because I made a mistake getting involved with Trent. Because I didn't know about Lila. And because. She paused. Because I'm pregnant and I'm terrified. The cafe was nearly empty when I arrived. Callie sat in a corner booth, her designer outfit replaced by jeans and an oversized sweater. A bruise peeked out from under her collar. He's losing control, she said before I could speak. The company's investigating financial irregularities. He blamed Marissa's company for the missing funds, but it was him. When she found out, he killed her.
Kelly flinched. I thought it was an accident. I swear I did. But then I found this. She slid a USB drive across the table. Security footage from their house. The night she died. My phone buzzed. A text from Finn. Mom, get home now. Trent's here. I have to go. I stood abruptly. My son. Wait. Callie grabbed my arm. There's more. The board meeting tomorrow. He's planning to. The cafe's window exploded inward. Callie screamed, shoving me down as glass rained around us. Through the chaos, I glimpsed a dark SUV speeding away. He knows. Callie whispered, blood trickling from a cut on her cheek. Oh God, he knows I talked to you. I helped her up, my mind racing. Finn was alone with Trent at my house. Lila was safe at least, still in the hospital under guard. Come with me, I said. We'll need your testimony. She shook her head, backing away. I can't. The baby, I have to think about. Callie. I caught her arm, feeling the tremors running through her body. You're already in this. Help me stop him, or he'll destroy you too. Just like he destroyed Marissa. For a moment, I saw the same fear in her eyes that I'd seen in my daughter's video. Then something harder took its place. Okay, she whispered, but we have to hurry. The board meeting isn't just about money. He's going to frame Marissa's company for corporate espionage. Once those documents are filed, then we'll stop him before he gets the chance. I pulled out my phone to call Finn. It's time to end this. My tires screeched as I pulled into my driveway, Callie clutching the dashboard beside me. Through the front window, I could see Finn and Trent in what looked like a calm conversation, but Finn's clenched fists told a different story. Stay here, I told Callie, but she was already opening her door. He'll be more controlled if I'm there, she said. He won't want me to see. The sentence hung unfinished, heavy with implications about what Trent was capable of. Inside, Trent sat in my favorite armchair like he owned it, while Finn stood rigid by the fireplace. The USB drive felt like it was burning a hole in my pocket. Eleanor, Trent smiled, all warmth and concern. I was just telling Finn about my plans to seek full custody of Lila. Given recent events, I'm worried about your mental state. Recent events like leaving your daughter tied up in a shed? Finn's voice cracked with rage. Allegations that will be thoroughly discredited. Trent waved his hand dismissively, then froze as Callie stepped into view. Something dark flickered across his face. What's she doing here? Telling the truth, Callie said, but her voice trembled. About everything. Trent stood slowly, straightening his jacket. Careful, Callie. Think about your future. Our future. I saw the security footage. I cut in. From the night Marissa died. His expression didn't change, but his left hand twitched, the same tell I'd noticed at poker nights years ago, when he was bluffing. What footage? The cameras you didn't know about, Callie said. The ones Marissa installed after she caught us, after she knew something was wrong. Trent moved with startling speed, grabbing Callie's arm. Finn lunged forward, but Trent already had his phone out. One call, he said quietly, and certain documents go public. Documents that show Marissa's company stealing corporate secrets. Documents that would destroy her legacy and leave Lila with nothing. Those documents are fake, I said, but uncertainty gnawed at me. How much damage could he do, even with lies? Does it matter? His grip on Callie tightened. The scandal would follow Lila forever. Is that what you want? To destroy your granddaughter's future in some misguided quest for revenge? It's not about revenge, I said, but the words felt hollow. Wasn't that exactly what I wanted? To make him pay? Lila's face flashed in my mind, not scared and hurt in the shed, but laughing at the park last summer, Marissa pushing her on the swings. What would justice mean for her? Let her go. Finn took another step forward. Or I swear. Or what? Trent's smile turned cruel. You'll add assault charges to your mother's growing list of problems? Face it, Eleanor. You've lost. Take the deal. Drop everything. Let me handle Isla's future and we all walk away. I pulled out my phone, fingers hovering over the screen. You're right about one thing. This ends now. I press play. Marissa's voice filled the room. 
If anything happens to me, it wasn't an accident. Trent's been. The recording cut off just like before, but it was enough. Trent's mask slipped, revealing something desperate and dangerous underneath. That proves nothing, he snarled, but his grip on Callie loosened. No, I agreed. But the security footage will. And the financial records. And Callie's testimony. The question is, how much are you willing to lose before you realize you've already lost everything? The silence stretched taut as a wire. In it, I heard Marissa's voice again, not from the recording, but from memory. Sometimes the best revenge is living well. I met Trent's eyes. So, what's it going to be? Detective Sarah Chin set a stack of photos on my kitchen table, spreading them out like a macabre deck of cards. Security footage stills from Marissa's house, financial documents, and images from Lila's hospital examination. We have enough to arrest him, she said, but making the charges stick will be harder. His legal team is already trying to paint me as unstable. I finished, pushing away a photo of Lila's bruised wrists and threatening to destroy Marissa's company reputation. Finn paced behind us, phone pressed to his ear. Yeah, I understand the board's concerns, but if you just look at the documentation. He caught my eye, shaking his head. Trent's lies were already taking root. My phone buzzed, a text from Callie. Meeting moved up to tonight. Trent's making his move early. I can't stall him anymore. There's something else, Detective Chin said quietly. We found evidence of previous incidents. Other women, before Marissa. The words hit like a physical blow. What kind of incidents? Similar patterns. Successful women who suddenly lost everything. Their companies, reputations, sometimes their lives. All ruled accidents or suicides. Finn ended his call. Mom, we've got another problem. Trent's lawyers are filing for emergency custody of Lila. They're claiming you orchestrated this whole thing to damage his reputation. The room tilted sideways. I gripped the table edge, my knuckles white. He can't, after what he did. He can try, Detective Chin said. And he has friends in high places. Another text from Callie. He knows I helped you. Says he'll make sure I lose the baby if I testify. The pieces clicked together. Trent's pattern, his confidence, the way he'd always stayed just ahead of consequences. He didn't just hurt people, he destroyed them completely. The board meeting, I said suddenly. What if we could prove the financial fraud before he frames Marissa's company? We'd need access to his private servers, Detective Chin replied. And authorization from. I have his passwords, Callie's voice came from the doorway. We all turned. She stood there, pale but determined one hand protectively over her stomach. All of them. And I'm ready to testify. It's dangerous, I warned. He'll come after you. He already is. She moved closer, laying a USB drive on the table. But I won't let him destroy another family. I owe Marissa that much. Finn checked his watch. The meeting's in three hours. Even with the passwords, downloading and analyzing that much data. Then we work fast, Detective Chin said, already pulling out her phone. I'll get my cyber team. A crash from outside cut her off. Through the window, I saw two men in dark suits approaching the house. Trent's private security. Back door, Detective Chin ordered, drawing her weapon. Now. As we moved, I grabbed Marissa's laptop and the USB drive. We had one chance to expose everything. The fraud, the abuse, the deaths he'd caused. One chance to ensure Lila's safety and Marissa's justice. Mom. Finn grabbed my arm as we slipped out the back. Whatever happens next, we're in this together. I thought of Marissa's final video, her voice trembling but determined. Of Lila in that shed, still brave despite everything. Of all the other women who'd faced Trent's wrath alone. Together, I agreed, clutching the evidence that could save or destroy us all. But we finished this tonight. The sound of breaking glass echoed from inside the house. As we ran, I silently promised Marissa that her death wouldn't be in vain. Trent had spent years building his house of cards. Time to watch it burn. The corporate boardroom loomed before me, all glass and steel and money. Detective Chen's cyber team had worked miracles with Callie's passwords, 
but we were cutting it close. Too close. He's already inside, Finn whispered, checking his phone. With the board and his lawyers. I clutched the flash drive containing everything, the security footage, financial records, Marissa's videos. My entire case against Trent, compressed into a tiny piece of metal and plastic. Mrs. Blake. A security guard approached. Mr. Calloway is expecting you. Of course he was. He'd probably orchestrated this whole moment, letting me get this far just to watch me fail. The boardroom doors opened. Trent sat at the head of the table, surrounded by stern-faced executives and sharp-suited lawyers. His smile hadn't changed since Marissa's funeral, practiced, perfect, poisonous. Eleanor, he stood, all concern and warmth. I'm so glad you came. We were just discussing Marissa's companies. Unfortunate situation. You mean the situation you created? I moved to plug the flash drive into the presentation system, but one of the lawyers cleared his throat. Before we proceed, he said, I should inform you that sharing potentially stolen corporate data would constitute a criminal act. Trent's smile widened. We're only trying to protect you, Eleanor. Your recent behavior, the false accusations, the harassment of my staff, the attempted kidnapping of my daughter. Kidnapping? My voice cracked. She was chained in a shed. A shed on property you broke into. Another lawyer interjected. After making numerous threats against Mr. Calloway, the room spun slightly. They had twisted everything, turned every piece of evidence against me. And the board members were nodding, buying every word. Play the security footage, Finn demanded, but Trent held up his hand. Ah, yes, the mysterious footage that supposedly shows me. He paused dramatically. Doing what, exactly? Because our technical team found only edited clips, manipulated dates. Really, Eleanor, fraud doesn't suit you. My phone buzzed. Detective Chun. Evidence tampering at the station. Original files corrupted. Callie missing. The floor seemed to drop out from under me. He got into everything, the evidence, the witnesses, even the police files. Now, Trent continued smoothly. Given your emotional state, I'm prepared to be generous. Drop these ridiculous allegations, sign over temporary custody of Lila while you seek help, and we can avoid pressing charges. You killed her, I whispered. You killed Marissa. Your daughter's death was a tragic accident, he said softly, his eyes hard. Don't dishonor her memory with these paranoid fantasies. The board members shifted uncomfortably. I could see it in their faces. They saw me as the unstable one, the grieving mother who'd lost touch with reality. Mom. Finn touched my arm. We need to go. Now. One more thing, Trent added as we turned to leave. The hospital called. Lila's been asking for her father. It would be a shame if your issues prevented those visits. The threat hung in the air, clear as crystal. He would use Lila to control me, just like he'd controlled Marissa. In that moment, I understood completely why Marissa had felt so hopeless at the end. Trent didn't just destroy evidence. He destroyed reality itself, replacing it with his own version where he was always the hero, always the victim, always in control. Outside the boardroom, my phone buzzed again. An unknown number, with a video attachment. The thumbnail showed Callie, terrified but alive, holding up today's newspaper. I have proof. The message read, the real proof, but we only have one chance to use it. I stared at the phone, then at Finn, thinking of Lila in that shed, of Marissa's final days, of all the women Trent had destroyed. One chance. It would have to be enough. Callie's proof led us to Marissa's old office building, now mostly empty after hours. Finn kept watch while I followed her directions to the third floor server room. My phone buzzed with Detective Chen's warning. Trent left the board meeting, moving fast. The server room door was already open. I wondered when you'd figured out. Trent's voice came from the darkness. He stepped into the dim emergency lighting, holding Marissa's old laptop. She always backed everything up here, paranoid to the end. Where's Callie? Safe. For now. He set the laptop down. You know, Marissa stood right there the night she died, making the same mistakes you're making. 
Movement behind him caught my eye. A flash of blonde hair. Callie, her face bruised, gesturing frantically at something on the desk beside Trent. She wasn't the first, was she? I kept his attention on me. Detective Chun found the others. All those accidents and suicides. Tragic coincidences. His smile turned sharp. Just like what's about to happen here. A grieving mother, unstable after her daughter's death, breaks in to destroy corporate property. Things get out of hand. You really think you can get away with it again? I already have. The board believes me. The police have nothing. Even your precious evidence is corrupted. He stepped closer. It's over, Eleanor. You lost. Maybe. I glanced at Callie again. She had something in her hands now, a small recording device. But Marissa didn't. I pressed play on my phone. Marissa's voice filled the room. If you're watching this, I'm dead. And Trent killed me. His composure cracked. That's not. I found his pattern. Marissa's voice continued. The women, the companies, the fake evidence. I've uploaded everything to a secure server. This is the key. Callie moved suddenly, tossing something small and metallic. I caught it, a USB drive on a familiar chain. Marissa's old necklace. Trent lunged for it, but Finn appeared in the doorway, Detective Chun beside him. It's over, Trent. Nothing's over. He grabbed Callie, using her as a shield. One call, and everything you love disappears. Lila, your reputation, Marissa's legacy. You can't hurt them anymore. Callie's voice shook, but her eyes were steel. I sent copies to everyone. The board, the police, the victims' families. Every single woman you destroyed. The mask finally shattered. Rage transformed his handsome face into something monstrous. He shoved Callie aside, lunging for me with murderous intent. I didn't flinch, didn't run. The taser hit him mid-stride, Detective Chen's aim perfect. He collapsed, twitching, as officers swarmed the room. Mom, Finn rushed to my side. Are you okay? I stared down at Trent, remembering Marissa's smile, Lila's courage, all the lives he'd broken trying to maintain his perfect facade. Your mistake, I told his prone form, was thinking this was about revenge. It was always about justice. For Marissa. For Lila. For all of them. As they led him away, I helped Callie to her feet. Thank you, she whispered, for not giving up. Marissa didn't give up either. I touched the USB drive, still warm from being hidden in the server room all these months. She made sure the truth would come out one way or another. My phone lit up with a text from the hospital. Lila's asking for you. Go, Detective Chin said. We've got enough to put him away for life. Multiple counts of fraud, assault, murder. I left them processing the scene, evidence mounting with every open file. Outside, the sun was rising, painting the sky in shades of hope. Time to go home. Time to heal. Time to show Lila that monsters can be beaten, that truth finds its way to light, and that love, fierce, protective, unrelenting love, is stronger than any darkness. Six months after Trent's arrest, I stood in Marissa's old office, watching Lila explore the space that would soon become her art room. The company board had transferred ownership back to the family, a small gesture of atonement for their role in Trent's schemes. Grandma look. Lila held up a dusty photo frame she'd found in a drawer. Marissa's smile beamed from behind the glass, her arms around a younger Lila. Can we put this one up? Of course, sweetheart. I helped her hang it on the freshly painted wall, next to the growing collection of her drawings. The latest showed three figures, Lila, me, and Finn, surrounded by bright colors and floating hearts. My phone buzzed. Detective Chen. Trent took the plea deal. Life sentence. No parole. Mom. Finn appeared in the doorway. Callie's here. She entered carefully, her baby bump now visible beneath her flowing dress. The board meeting went well, she said. They've agreed to compensate all the families Trent hurt. It won't bring anyone back, but it's a start. I finished. The healing process was different for everyone. Some of Trent's other victims' families had wanted revenge. Others just wanted to forget. We'd chosen to rebuild. Aunt Kelly, 
Lila ran to hug her. The title had started spontaneously a few weeks ago, and nobody had corrected it. Family came in many forms, we'd learned. I found something else, Callie said, pulling out a small USB drive. More videos for Marissa. Personal ones for Lila. When she's older. I took the drive, feeling its weight. More pieces of Marissa to discover. More memories to share. Thank you. There's something else. Finn shifted uncomfortably. Remember those offshore accounts Trent had? The forensic accountants found another one. In Lila's name. The implications hung heavy in the air. Blood money. Meant to buy silence or loyalty. We'll donate it. I decided. Set up a foundation for domestic violence survivors. In Marissa's name. Lila tugged at my sleeve. Can we make it help kids too? Like me? Especially kids like you. I hugged her close, marveling at her resilience. The nightmares were less frequent now. The therapy helping her understand none of it was her fault. A familiar melody drifted through the office. Marissa's old music box, the one that started this whole journey, playing its bittersweet tune. Lila had placed it on the windowsill, letting afternoon sunlight catch its tarnished surface. You know, Callie said softly, Marissa told me once that revenge wasn't about destroying someone. It was about refusing to let them destroy you. I watched Lila return to her drawing, adding another figure to the family portrait. Marissa, floating above like a guardian angel. She hummed along with the music box, peaceful and present in a way that seemed impossible six months ago. We should go, Finn checked his watch. The support group meets in an hour. I nodded, gathering my things. The group had been Callie's idea, bringing together families affected by Trent's crimes, creating strength through shared healing. As we left the office, Lila stopped to straighten the photo of Marissa. Mom's watching us, she said matter-of-factly. Making sure we're okay. Yes, she is. I touched the frame gently. And we are okay, aren't we? Lila smiled. Marissa's smile, bright and unbreakable. We're better than okay. We're family. The music box played its final notes as we walked out together, leaving the shadows of the past behind. Not forgotten, never forgotten, but transformed into something stronger. Something that could heal instead of hurt. Sometimes the best revenge isn't about getting even. It's about getting better.